Hey, everybody. We are back at this second part of the Absolute Beginner's Guide to Modeling for 3D Printing in Blender 2.8, a title which I really need to figure out how to shorten. <laughs> but here's our monkey from last time, and, and I hope you guys actually did try to do the homework of, of lining up the view and then jumping to it with the hotkeys and found out whether or not you like using the hotkeys or whether you want to do lock view like that with with another technique. Now you might have noticed when we do this that there's this strange kind of squish that happens when we switch to the jump. And what is that? Did you figure out what it is? Now, I'm not going to get into it right now. I'll leave that for you to figure out and we'll talk about later. But if you absolutely have to know, the key words that you need to search that'll help you find it are perspective and orthographic. Now, what those mean, like I say, we'll get into it. But right now, I want to get into teaching you how to move objects around in the scene. This is our first step. So the first thing we need to do, I'm not going to imagine that you guys have the scene from last time. Let's start a brand new scene. Up at the very top of the menu, uh, the Blender menu, choose File, New, and then General. I'm going to discard the changes, but hey, if you wanted to save your first Blender scene ever, I wouldn't begrudge you that. And we're back to that default scene. Again, we've got the camera, we've got the cube, and we've got the light source here. And we're going to need to delete them all, but I'm going to show you a faster way this time to delete them all. Now remember, anytime we're trying to figure out how to do something new the first time, the best place to look for that is right there in the top of the 3D view where it says view, select, add, and object. Almost Everything that you need will be in that menu. So I'm going to, well, we want to select, actually. And there is a select op menu here, so I'm going to click it. And we want to select them all. But before we click that, take a look at what the shortcut key is for that one. Select all is done with the A key. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just so elegant, so simple? And selecting none is Alt-A. So instead of clicking on these menus, I'm going to click off of this menu or just mouse away from it. And I'm just going to use A to select everything. Alt-A to deselect. A to select. Alt-A to deselect. That's wonderful. I'm going to hit A, and then I'm going to delete it either by hitting X or the delete key. There we go. An empty scene for you to look at. And we need to add a new object to the scene. Now, last time we added the monkey head, we did it through the add menu up here, but I'm gonna show you something even easier. Let's teach you the hotkey for adding stuff. Move your mouse away from that menu over there. Oh, that menu, it's so far away. I wish that the menu could just come to me. Hold down shift and hit A, shift A. Look at that, that add menu, shift A came right to your mouse pointer. You don't have to go way over there. It comes to you. Oh, it's so good. Now, we are going to start this by adding a icosphere. I want you to add an icosphere to the scene. And I want you to be sure that you're looking at the scene at an odd angle. If you followed the steps that I did with the default scene, it will be at this kind of odd angle. But if you snapped your view to the side or the top, break it, orbit around, and look at it from a different angle. Now, the first thing I want to teach you is how to move it, how to transform it. So how do we transform this object? And like I said, we're always going to look in that menu first if we're trying to find a new command. Well, which, which one of these menus do you think would have that command in it? Is it view, select, add, or object? In this case, it's an object because we want to move the object. But I don't see move anywhere on here. But if you go down a little bit to transform, move is in that menu. Now, the hotkey for moving, as you can see right there, is G. G. That's weird. Why not M? Now, we can't use M. It's been used for something else. But G, think of it as grab and move and it makes perfect sense so we're going to grab and move this now if you click on the menu option here then when you start moving the mouse then the object will move but you know it's kind of weird my mouse pointer is going in weird directions and falling off the screen when i do that but it works then you just click and set that object's location in the 3d scene which is pretty cool 
I want you to do this exact set of motions. I want you to add a new object, Shift A, add a mesh icosphere, then G, grab and move it somewhere else. Now, there is another way to move, and I'll teach it to you, but I want you to practice the, these moves later. So, Shift A, add a new icosphere, and then over here on the right, there is the move uh, gimbal, I guess. It's, it's the move thing. You can cl click on that, and now we are in the move command, and now if you click on the circle of it, you can move it around, which is it's super easy. I actually really like that, but I want you to practice. I want to you to try building this muscle memory. So follow this these steps. Click on the select box at the top here, okay, uh, of the left-hand side of your 3D view. Those, where that move menu was, go up to, to the select box, click it, and now we're just going to hit Shift A, add an icosphere. G to move it. Shift A, add an icosphere. G to move it. And I want you to repeat that motion. Add, move, add, move, and keep on doing that until you've got, oh, 10 to 20 icospheres on the scene. Just move them a little bit and then add a new one. If you need to pause the video so that you can, because you're not maybe going as fast as I am, I've got this. This is just practice to me. And you don't have to have them be far from each other. You can make little clusters. This is this is your scene, and you can set it up however you want. But I want you to shift A, add, G, move, shift A, add, G, move your icospheres around in the scene. Now, let's see. I've got, uh, I've got 16 of them. I think that's probably enough. I want to move that one away just a little bit. There we go. Beautiful scene. Now, I did mention in the last video that we are trying to create a 3D scene with 2D tools. So while you were moving these objects, where in the 3D space were they moving? Obviously, on your screen, they were moving up, down, left, and right. But where did that translate to in the 3D space? Well, now I want you to orbit your view and change it around. So let's orbit the view. And if you line it up just right, you might realize that they are all moving in a flat plane of some sort, but it's not its not a flat plane in the 3D space. They're not moving across the ground. They're not even moving straight up and down. The plane is kind of tilted at an odd angle. Why is it? That's a weird, that's a weird angle for it to be at. Well, let's try it one more time and see if we learn something. What I want you to do is orbit your view until you can see that plane. And I don't care what angle you do that at. You can do that at any angle, so long as you can see that plane of, of icospheres. And then zoom out just a little bit. Shift A, add, and this time we're going to add, oh, let's add cubes. No, let's add toruses, donuts. Let's get some donuts in there. G to move it. Move it anywhere else on your screen. Then shift A, add another torus, G to move it. We're going to repeat what we did before, but this time with toruses, we're going to move them around in the scene until we have enough of them that we think that we can build a theory as to what's going on. So get, you know, 10 of them, 15 of them, somewhere in there. Just keep adding them until you feel good about it. And again, if you're not moving as fast as I am, pause the video. This is, this is building muscle memory that we're doing here, okay? All right. All right, so I've got a couple of donuts in my scene. I hope that you do too. Orbit your view. Change your view around and take a look. These donuts are also at a plane, but it's not the same plane that the icospheres are. Do you have a theory as to what's happening and why it's doing this? What is that plane that they were stuck at? What What is that plane that they were all moving along? It's the plane of your monitor. They're moving up, down, left, right, according to your monitor. But because your monitor was pointed at a weird angle, they were moving at a weird angle. So if that's the case, then setting your view could allow you to control 
the movement of these objects. Let's try it out, okay? Let's switch to the top view. And you can do that any way that you want. I hit numpad 7 to do it. Then shift A, we're going to add a cube this time. Move it around and zoom out a little bit so that those previous examples are, are just kind of in the middle of what we're doing here with cubes. Shift A, add a cube. G to move it. Shift A, add a cube. G to move it. And we're not going to need too many of these. So maybe after five or six of them, you can stop. Okay, I've got six of them on there. That should give us the details. If we're right, then all of these should be flat to the XY plane, just like it was a floor. Ready? Orbit your view. Sure enough, they are all flat to the XY plane, just like we were moving them on a floor. So now we know how we can accurately control where our objects move to. All we have to do is switch our view. If we want to move them up, we just need to do it from the side view or front view. And then when we move them, they'll go up and down as well. And we can control them that way. Uh, if we want them to go side to side, we can just do it from the top view and make sure that we're careful about it and then orbit our view to make sure it's where it belongs. But boy, that's kind of cumbersome. It would be nice if we could tell Blender, hey, when you move this, only move it in the X or the Y or the Z. And what am I talking about with X and Y and Z? Well, take a look at that compass in the upper right-hand side. Do you remember that compass that we could click and drag and orbit our view? Do you see how it's got an X and a Y and a Z on it? This will make sense in just a second. But first, let's clear this scene. Do you remember how to select everything and clear the scene? It's simply A, right? And then X or delete to delete them all. There we got an empty scene again. Let's start. Let's add our icosphere back in. And then G to move it. But before you click to drop it, notice it's moving around in my weird, strange plane. While you're doing that, though, hit X on your keyboard. And when you do that, it will be locked to the X, Y, or to the X plane or X axis. And if you take a look at that compass, once you place the icosphere down, when it pops back up, you'll see, yep, that's X. X is going just that direction. So I'm going to add a new icosphere. G, X, move it, drop it. Add an icosphere. G, X, move it, drop it. Add an icosphere. Shift A. Icosphere, G, X. So we've got a couple of icospheres on the x-axis. Now, there is admittedly another way to do this. So shift A, add another icosphere. But this time, I want you on the left-hand side of your 3D view to select from that toolbox there the icon for move. It's the third icon down on the left-hand side on the toolbar. Move. And notice now we've got this move gimbal here, and it's got an arrow on the X. If you just click that arrowhead and move it, no matter where you move your mouse pointer, it will only move it in the X. So we can drop it on the X just as easy as that. And if you want to use that gimbal, that is fine. But for today, let's click the select box back in our toolbar here. I want you to practice with the keyboard commands. And if you decide you don't like it and just aren't going to get into it, that's fine. Let's add a new shape. This time, let's add Oh, we haven't used our monkey today, so let's use our monkey. And see, my angle was so odd, I was looking at it from behind. This time when we move it, I want to move it 90 degrees to the X that we were moving it at. So hit G. Monkey's moving at odd angles. Press Y. And now notice wherever you move your mouse, it's locked to moving just forward and backward. Shift A to add a monkey. G, Y. Shift A to add a monkey. G, Y, and drop it. Shift A to add one more monkey. And G, Y to move it. Excellent. What if we wanted to move it up and down? What key would we hit? Have you figured it out already? Let's hit Shift A. Let's add a cube this time. And then G, and what do we hit? That's right, Z. Now we're going up. G, Z. Shift A to add another cube, G, Z. Shift A to add another cube, G, Z. Now that's pretty good, kind of.
But what if we wanted to move it around on the floor of our world in the X and Y plane? If I had to, let's shift A, add a, a donut, Taurus here, and then I hit G and move it into X, and then G and move it into Y, that's <sighs> cumbersome again. That's a lot of work. I wish there was a faster way. Well, there is. Shift A, add another Taurus to our scene. This time hit G, but I want to move it in the X and the Y. So I'll hit X, and then I'll hit Y. Wait, nope, that doesn't work. If I hit Y, it switches to X. To Y, if I hit X, it switches to X. I want you to hit Shift Z, and now move it around. And now notice that it is moving in the X and the Y, but not the Z. Isn't that kind of weird? Hit Shift A. Add another torus. G, shift Z. Shift Z means move it in all but the Z axis. Shift A to add another torus. G, shift Z to move it. Now, you might think that's a little bit weird. Add another torus. G, shift Z, and that moves it in the X and the Y. But that's, that's the way it works in Blender. And it has a kind of sense to it. I want to move it in not the Z, well then that only leaves the X and the Y. What if I wanted to move it up and down, forward and backward, but I wanted it to stay in that alleyway and not move left and right in the X? Well, let's shift A, add a cylinder this time. We're getting all the shapes in there. Hit G, and now how are we gonna move this up and down, forward and backward, but not left and right? Left and right is with the X, shift X, there we go. Shift A to add another cylinder. G, Shift X. Shift A to add another cylinder. G, Shift X. Oops, Shift X. Joe, there we go. I'm going to put that one. We got two stacked right on top of our monkey right there. Okay, so I think you get the idea. And if we wanted to move it left and right, up and down, but not forward and backward, what would we do? Well, let's Shift A, add a cone. G, and then what do we hit? What do we hit? Shift Y. Very good. So there we go. I'm going to gonna put this cone on top of that sphere right there. In fact, I'm going to put cones on top of all my spheres because I can do that nice and quick with this command. G, Shift Y. Last cones. G, Shift Y. Now, for this last cone, I am going to give the consolidation... There, Consolation. <laughs> I'm going to admit that we could do this with the gimbal, so we're going to do it with the gimbal. Shift A, add a cone. Click the move gimbal on the right hand side in our toolbar on the 3D view. That's the third icon down. Move. Notice if we zoom in on this, well, we can't really zoom in on it. It'll shrink it down. It stays a constant size. But notice that there is a green sort of square there. That green square is everything but the Y. So let's click that green square and put our last cone on top of our icosphere there. And there we go. If you want to move it in the X and, X and Y, but not the Z, you click the blue square and it moves around in the X and Y, but not the Z. If you want to move it up and down, backward and forward, but not left and right, the red square is the way that you do that. Now that's a useful tool. I could totally see you using that if that's the way that you want to go. But for today, I hope that you've enjoyed practicing using the G command, the move command, and constraining it that way. All right, I'm going to clear the scene real fast. A to select everything and X delete. Yeah, you got it. And what I want you to do is I want you to build a totem pole. I want you to do a little uh, monkeying around. I told you I was going to use that line. Shift A, add a monkey. Shift A, add another monkey, but put this monkey on top of the other monkey. And then make your totem pole with two or three monkeys. Add, uh, add a couple of cubes to the side for the wings of our totem pole. Maybe put a cylinder underneath it. Actually, no, I want you to put a cylinder in front of it for the... Uh, not really altar. Uh, totem poles don't have altars. The, the stump of the tree that they cut down and moved to make it. So a cylinder in front, 
two cubes to the side and then stack four monkeys tall and make a totem pole. That is your homework for this assignment. But as always, I want to say thank you very much for following along with me in this video and learning Blender. Next time we will do hopefully some more transformations and uh, move on with this. And as always, safety first. I'll see you next time.